Hello, I'm Mira, and uh, today I'll talk about an important topic in our lives. It's the environment and environmental problems and how to protect our environment. Our environment is facing many problems in our generation, just like global warming. Global warming is the Global warming is the rise in averages in climate. Uh, it's already affecting our lives and our cities, countries, and it's keeping on affecting many cities. Um, scientists claim that after 100 years, maybe 200, uh, New York will be the first city to be uh, flooded because of the ice um, being meant in the world because of global warming. Another problem uh, of the environment is the uh, overpopulation. Overpopulation is that the uh, number of people exceeds the resources that are given to us by uh, the earth. So that's really an important thing that we should focus on. Now I'll talk about how to find solutions for it. Uh, we can uh, save electricity, <coughs> save water, uh, we can We can uh, do other things just like use uh, reusable bags. Uh, we can uh, recycle garbages, not throw our things on the uh, floor. Many things to do just to protect our uh, environment because uh, protecting your environment will protect you first and protect your uh, friends, protect your society. That's, that's it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dana Ismail, and my topic for today is lifelong learning. So, the definition of lifelong learning is all the learning that takes place throughout the lifetime with the aim to further your knowledge or skills. When I say lifelong learning, I know you're all immediately associating it with school, but that's not always the case. Lifelong learning can be anything from learning a new skill to a new sport, maybe even a new language. Now, let's talk about the health benefits. So, first off, I want to mention reading. First of all, reading is a really good pastime, but it's also therapeutic, relaxing, and has been scientifically proven to relieve stress after a long day. Actively using your brains and taking in more knowledge is vital, especially as we age. The older we get, the more parts of our brain slowly worsen and our memory shrinks. But it has been scientifically proven that by learning new stuff and constantly taking in information, we are slowing the early effects of Alzheimer's, which is a type of dementia. But I know that reading doesn't appeal to everyone, but that's really no excuse because we now live in the age of social media. So next time you're on Instagram, maybe search up some organizations or go online and look at some of the problems that are happening in the world around you. You can continue if you want it. So whether you're, whether you're learning stuff through life experiences, such as traveling, which is great for learning more languages or more about cultures, or if you're learning stuff online through apps or the web, you have no idea how much all this learning is really benefiting your brain. So I want you all to put down your phones, go out, maybe go out for a walk, explore, and learn something new. We have been given these wonderful brains, so let's use them before we lose them. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nain. Today I'll be talking about achieving my goals or setting my goals. Everyone has a goal, when he was small or when he's older. For example, when you're a kid, you save up money to buy your favorite action figure. Well, my goal when I grow up is to become a doctor, and how will I achieve it? I have to study hard, work hard, become someone when I grow up. I don't have to let the others affect me for, uh, for me to be somebody. I'm already somebody. I know what to do. I know what to be. So there's a lot of people who stop you from being someone you want to be. Those people tell you you're not going to be nothing, but you are something, which I am something, which I'll be someone when I grow up. I'll study hard, work hard, let everybody know my name, share my story, and that's how I'll achieve my goals. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zain Hadid and I'm going to talk about community service, specifically how it affects high school students. 
There are four main advantages. The first is that it improves your applications and college resumes. How can it improve it? A lot of employers and colleges will look towards your extracurriculars as much as they look at your academics. But the more experience you have, the more things you've been a part of, the more likely you're going to be accepted into that college or job. The second thing is that you, it increases your educational potential or your academic potential. It's proven that students that volunteer are more likely to have better grades and better work life. Why, we don't know. We just think that it's because they're more willing to work harder to achieve their goals and master their dreams. The third thing is that it creates a network. For students who know what they want to become after college and after school, they can volunteer with professionals in that field to gain experience and advice from them on how to achieve their goals. <laughs> the fourth thing is that you become a better person. It's proven that students and people that volunteer are less likely to fall into mental illness such as depression and anxiety. Uh, because you're constantly giving back and feeling better about yourself and towards others. You also gain a lot of skills, such as communication skills to book skills. You start to learn more about yourself and about your community. So take my advice. Go out there, find a volunteering job, because it'll help your present and it'll help your future. Thank you very much.